Hello and welcome to another update to the Human Shader Pack. Now in this pack you will see five female heads with different styles based on the hair, the eyes and the skin. Uh, with the skin shaders I've done a few updates to this with uh, the ability to add in your own makeup and that's done through an RGB texture which you paint in by colour code. For example this area is colour coded green uh, and then there's red here, a little bit of green here, and blue for the lips, and blue for this part. And that red, green, blue channel mask allows you to then make alterations to these colours, and also the amount of glitter in those areas. And the glitter you can see affected by the light. You can change the glitter scale and the amount quite easily and that works across all three but one way to control it is to change the alpha Let's bring the alpha down if you want less glitter and you can use this overall if you wanted to give glitter to the whole face and um, so you could add a little bit of red to the whole texture and that means this area would cover the whole thing or whichever channel you want to use. Now the blue channel here uses quite a lot of glitter for the lips. I'm just going to tone it down and you can change that style up a bit. That looks pretty cool. So the hair is the latest installation of the hair shader which uses my VRTC method which is red, uh, red channel, green channel, blue channel for variation, roughness, uh, variation, root and tip. Sorry, so many abbreviations. But anyway, you can change these quite easily. Uh, this is changing one of the tones of the red channel. So if there's a dark tone in the hair in this, uh, you know, in the red channel of this, there will be variation in the strength and in the blue channel there will be the tip here and the green channel is the root so again similar masking system to the makeup and you can use that to drive colours of the hair so you can easily make a completely different style let's try and match the, the sort of blue there so we'll go for that and then maybe a greenish tone and you can choose the amount of gloss you want in the alpha so if you want really wet looking hair you can bring those up that is quite noisy because of other factors because you've got control of the bump so reducing the bump helps metallicness uh, the strength of the highlights you can tone those right down and any sort of noise and spread here so the gloss has really got a heavy factor to a lot of this so you want to tone it down Not quite the green I'm after just yet something a bit more like that now we can play with the highlights <coughs> So let's so go for similar colour highlights and increase the strength of those. And we can get some pretty fantastic looking um, here. Almost looks synthetic. So it's a good idea to tone it down if you want it to be realistic looking and make one of your highlights quite light, like kind of whitish greyish tone. Okay. So, got a kind of matching style there. Uh, you can also boost the effect. If you turn this off, it's going to use the original tones. And you see it's already got quite a good um, amount of control with that. You can also control the, the root here. So let's make it kind of bluish to bring out our eyes. Um, uh, if you want you can switch this on and it gives you extra control of the strengths of everything and it really just gives you some really different results um, 
it's good fun just to mess around with it because you might get a look, a particular look that you want. It's quite nice, all this colour coming in, but I think that's just really kind of forcing the the root tones. And obviously the colour stops making sense because some of these these values you're you're bending some of this uh, these tone ranges further than they'd like to go. So I don't really clamp these values out inside the shader, I just let you overdrive them. Okay, something like that is quite stylish. Now the hair planes that I've made, you know, they could do with a little bit more coverage and loose hairs everywhere, but uh, for the time being, this is what we're working with. I'm also using a post-process effect called Mad Goat, and I've got that enabled here. So as soon as I play, it's going to fix a lot of the noise. So it's fixed a lot of the noise. I've just got the light rotating there. Got some of the scatter and the got the eyes dilating as well. So quite a few things going on. So that's the that's the skin and hair shaders basically. Uh, the eye shader is another new uh, bunch of features for that. So you've got your your usual mask, your RGB mask, which I like using quite a lot. So if you have a look at this, and you open it in Photoshop, and you look at each channel, the red channel. Each, each time you look at the channels, they'll turn into a grayscale, and that's really like a weight mask, right? So white means more, and black means less. So you get more of this vein tone, and then you define the color of it. So it's just a masking system. You've got the, the limbo ring and the actual kind of mask for the iris and pupil area. And then all of this is driven, is, is getting fed into the shader. Oh choose the right one. It's getting fed into the shader here. I'll just add some demo eyes to her eyes actually so I can show you it better. So there's two LODs for the eyes and two LODs for the hair so you have to make sure you apply those. So let's go for demo four. Okay that's pretty cool. So it's already pretty nice eyes but you can change these around so you get your eye size. Now it does seem kind of backwards that down's up and up's down and that's just the way that uh, things had to be done inside the shader. I could easily reverse it uh, but either way it's fine. You got your iris size so the texture that you feed in here and there's all sorts of textures that you can add. Let's go back to that eye if you can find it. Right, so you can choose any texture, doesn't matter what it is. You can put a logo in there. There you go, there's the uh, thing we load logo, the amplify logo. You've got some sky, uh, anything at all. Got some crazy looking cyberpunk masks that I've added in. I say masks, iris masks. Now you define the, the colors and the strength through the caustic strength and the iris amounts here and the caustic effect is basically it's a little kind of half circle around the eye and what it does is it moves based on the light direction and it just helps to fake a little bit of a caustic effect because it's pretty impossible to make it real caustics um, in the shader it's probably a way to do it, but it might be too much of a, an overhead for just a simple eye. So back to the eye, let's see what else. So I can change the iris color and the base of the eye color. So I could go for like the dark green of the hair and this could be more of a kind of bluish or something. You can see it's just getting added in Change the eye size, the iris size, lens gloss, so that's just for the lens. Uh, inside the eyeball alpha is the gloss control for the actual eyeball, and you also have control of the 
color of that. I've added in a pupil color control, so you can now color the pupil and end up with something really cyberpunk. Um, so if you're making like a cyberpunk game and you want these kind of customizable characters, you've got all sorts of control here. So the color and the alpha controls the emissive. So that's pretty nice. Uh, you can do anything you want. Uh, you've also got control of the pupil sharpness. So if you want it to be quite faint, you just put, bring down that pupil sharpness. Uh, width and height as well, in case you want kind of frog eyes. Just You have to increase the size a bit in some cases um, just for that to work. And also the, the, the pupil is affected by light. So that's already happening based on the light direction and intensity so it's an extra factor you see when I increase the light the pupils dilate so that's natural right that's gonna happen I might add a toggle in so you can see it with and without but I don't want to over complicate things now because there's already quite a lot happening here as you can see it's just a case of getting used to it um, so we get eye shading power which basically if I take one of these eyes out yeah. But if I take one of these eyes out, you can see it adds darkness to the top and bottom. When I've got eye shading power, then it's just adding like kind of fake ambient occlusion. And it's nice to have it. If your eyes are moving around quite a lot, then don't go so strong with it. But um, it's there. It's there to be used. Okay, so let's move that back. Um, let's see what else can I show you. We've got the sclera bump scale, so for the, the veins and stuff, you can increase the, the bump scale. Uh, you've got control of the eye vein color and the amount. So, the amount I like to put into the red channel, uh, sorry, the alpha channel. So, based on the strength of the green channel in the mask. That's getting multiplied by the color here, and that's then getting channeled, you know, and back into the eye. So it's a nice way to get um, whatever you want there, different colors and things. So there's so much control, kind of blue eyes and red and green veins if you want, you know, stuff like that, and it just looks crazy. Uh, <laughs> But I've pretty much gave control of everything. A lot of it I do through the alpha sliders because I don't want to clog up this whole thing. Uh, so the alpha sliders generally for effect or power, right? The strength of something. So you choose the color, then you choose the strength. And you can get some bizarre looking characters. Uh, another thing with the eye is you've got a minimal gl glow. So that just means, even if it's not in the light, the eyes are still going to have some kind of brightness to them, right? So if I put this um, behind it, it's good. you can see the, the pupils really dilate there. So they dilate quite a lot because of the size of the eyes. Um, let's click that again. Where are you? I demo 4, right? I demo 4. Let me just lock that. Right, so... The eye size, so you've got pupil dilate, right? And you've got people have people affected by light amount. So you could have it so the light doesn't affect it so much. So I just need to reduce the size, right? To a kind of ideal amount. Let me just make it black. Right. People affected by light. So that's quite strong. It means it's, it's really going to affect the pupils. Uh, the pupil auto dilate factor is similar, but basically these are multiplying with each other. I could effectively turn them into one thing. Um, I'll look into that later because that seems to be a good chance to optimize that. Forget exactly why I have the two. So pupil dilate factor. I think this is the amount that it dilates when it does. And this is the amount that it moves by based on the light. 
which is the same thing I think so I'm just kind of maybe just arguing with myself here but anyway kind of the same thing so I'm just going to change this back to one because you can see you can also like get cat eyes or just the pupil size so once you've got your sizing the way you want it then you can rotate the light and you can see actually actually how much is getting affected so the dilate factor I could bring that down affected by light down right so it's not getting affected by light so much but if I bring them right up you can see the dilation um, bring one down one up right nothing happens there so they're multiplying with each other for sure pretty sure of it yeah so it means I can I could potentially get rid of one of these in a, in a future update. So basically doing the same thing. That's another thing you can optimize. Sometimes when you're developing these things, you add you add something and you forget you've added it, so you end up adding another one, and it gets a bit confusing. But anyway, it's no big deal. So you've also got the push parallax, which is when you're looking at the eye. Let me just do it with a round eye because it works a little bit better. So I'll just change that back to one. Pupil size, dilate factor. Okay, bring it down a bit. So you see the eyes are really kind of pushing there. So that's the parallax mask. There we go. So I'm really pushing that those eyes back with the parallax mask. And you can create your own parallax masks and you'll see the effect they actually have. Uh, if you were to use like anything weird, you're going to get a lot of oddness. Right, let's find something that half works or is noisy. There we go, it's kind of pushing a lot of things. Um, it happens to be in the middle of the texture, so, so it's got to be the image that I've supplied. So that's just called uh, pupil pupil iris. Okay, what it's called now? Something mask parallax mask para. Okay, right. So that's used to help drive the positioning of the eyes. The pupil, the pupil of the eyes. It just does the distortion, so when you look round, you can you can change that, and you can push it a bit more at the back if you want or not. So you can you can push it and pull it in various ways, and that's quite nice control. You can see how it looks at different angles. Right, so she's looking very stylized. Um, got the minimum glow quite low. I've got eyeball micro scatter. Uh, effects normal or other things, right? So you got this little micro scatter and it's it's hard to see when everything's so bright. Um, so eyeball micro scatter. You do need the eyeball to be quite glossy to see this. So it's, what it's doing is just creating a little bit of noise in the eye. Um, and it also you can sort of see it there as you move it around. Does it affect the gloss map or does it affect the normal map? And it's just a way of getting some subsurface scattering in the eye. Uh, you've got the sclera bump scale, so between those you've got control round about the eye as well if you need it. And you can see there's a little bit of metallic looking thing going on there, so I'm just wondering if there's a metalness there's a metalness mixer here. So one controls the so it's based on this, right? based on this. So you get red, green, blue. Red is the lumbo, lumb, is it lumbo ring. Okay, so we put that at zero 
and green is the the eyeball. But let's not get any metal. And blue is the actual iris area. So they're just additional things if you need them. Most of this stuff you wouldn't really need. The defaults are pretty nice. The you know the shading and stuff is it's all good to go. Um, so let me just change the eye vein color amount back to like dark red. The eyeball back to some kind of white. And the glossiness is stored in here. Minimum glow. Okay, and I just check the check everything with directional light just to make sure that there's nothing strange. That's fine. Yeah, so that's pretty much everything. Um, I'm just go over the skin shader one more time just to make sure I've covered everything there. So I've got that locked. Uh, let's go for this skin tone. So most of the skin tone is driven from the actual albedo, right? But you can change that to any of these other ones. And then you can tint it some more. So this is kind of palish tan skin, I guess. Uh, you've got control of metalness in case you want it to be more kind of stylized. You know, you can also bring that right down beyond zero, but it has no effect. I was hoping it would help it a bit more, but you can change the, the smoothness amount. So if you want it more wet looking, you can see all this detail noise is in the micro normals. So that's just a texture getting, you know, repeated over and over again. So you can reduce the strength of that if you want. And you've got everything about the the SSS up here, so you can increase the strength and you know the color and stuff. Uh, mix it with the texture a bit more, so you get to see it a bit better. A lot of these controls, it does seem like they do the same. They kind of overdrive the effect and. As I get used to the understanding my own shaders, because a lot of them have been developmental, then I can start to refine what's in there and what it's doing. That just gives you extra control. So let me just move this point light around and see if there's any switch tones. It switch on just needs to be more intense and. Just the directional light. So you can imagine this is like a nighttime scene. These chicks look pretty, pretty funky, uh, cyberpunky. And the hair's looking pretty nice. A little bit metallic in some places, like this one's not got a lot of shine to it. And it's easy enough just to go in and. Um, and add some shine. You can either do it through the gloss here, but you see it's got a different effect. It's more of a reflective effect or wet look, uh, and that's for both these. So the best thing to do is go into the highlight control. Um, the only thing with the highlights is they depend on the directional light having a little bit of strength in it. So just be wary of that. Also. You'll have to increase the. Let me just get it. Have to increase the the strength of the actual color. Here. So let me just try a few things. Strength. Strength and spread and things. Noise power. Power.
quite a bit. Uh, um, I wonder why it's so dark. Whereas the these ones are really light, but this one's so dark. Um, let me just check. It's using the cutout shader. And this is using Okay. Maybe if I change the shader mode, I've created a cutout shader and I've also created the dither based one just to give you the option of whatever's best. So if I change this to human shaders, here shader, and I go for this one, you see you get a lot more vibrancy from it. And I think it's because um, of some shader graph thing. In fact, let me fix that real quick. So that won't take two minutes. So I'm going to open my shadow graph here. And if I change this to okay, maybe opaque. Okay, not getting the alpha anymore. Uh, and that was on tree transparent cut out. Just not much difference between those two. Let's do alpha to coverage. Um, let's try opaque again. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I think the issue was the alpha to coverage, yeah, was needed for the effect. That's all I was missing. So, uh, in effect, you could have this cutout shader used. So that's the cutout one, and you've got the the not cutout one, I guess. Um, and I guess one will work. One will likely work on mobile. And one won't, so I'm going to leave this as transparent cutout just to be sure I've got the two options. But you can see the fallback to that is it no longer supports um, the the light source for some reason. I'm trying to think why why that would be. Change that to opaque, transparent. of alpha to coverage uh, transparent cut out no that's too bad that um, it's deciding what it wants kind of by itself uh, let's try geometry okay so it's definitely Something to do with this being opaque. No, oh, no, no, transparent. Opaque, transparent, alpha to coverage. So the render queue may have something to do with it. Alpha test, transparent. Now you just need to watch that the transparency works with everything. So one of the reasons I use cutout is because with transparency, it's easy to get defects when you're using post process. So for example, if I was to add some post process stack here, I've got one on it, but check it's got ambient occlusion. Yep. Just check. Sometimes you get defects from it. Put the light back on quite high. Okay, it doesn't seem too bad. I've seen I've seen some issues from it before, but this actually looks okay. Right, now this here is like super bright, like so glossy. 
but I'd rather that's there because now it supports the these lights, right? So the alpha to coverage is fine because when you actually play it, uh, any, any sort of post-process AA will help get rid of the, what we've done here. Any post-process AA will help get rid of the noise. You see it's got rid of some already. And you can change the settings of that. So if I take that one off, I don't know, two times, you can see some weird noise here. But I always find four times SSA is nice. And even if you've got some post process on uh, anti aliasing on in the post process, you can get rid of some more. Uh, and you can turn off MSA if it helps as well. It doesn't do it, and in this case, I think it's getting overridden um, by the Mad Goat one. But that's pretty much, let me just save that out. Okay. That's pretty much that. Um, I'm going to tone down this here, then I'm going to call it a day with the video. Sorry this has been such an extended video, but it is a big pack and I do want to cover everything in one go. Um, I've done quite a lot to the shader over time and there's a lot more you can do with it. Uh, if you need help customizing your characters, just get in touch. I'm happy to take your character and you know get my shaders working for the hair, get the skin working for you. Uh, I'm more than happy to do that because it helps me sort of research things a bit as well and understand your workflow so that I can then refine the shaders to adapt to uh, your workflow. But this this seems to be like the overall sort of way forward. What I'm doing here. Um, let me change the strength, that's just way too high. I like the, cause this kind of look though, but it's just too strong. So I'm just decreasing the strength, that's quite nice. I want it just to complement the eyes and the lips and stuff here. Right, uh, this one's mega. Don't tone that down. That's a bit better. <laughs> uh, you know who this one looks like, right? Anyway, can't say those names. Not allowed to. Uh, okay, I'm gonna change the. Oh, that's the skin. Oh, that's quite nice, smooth actually. Oily, very oily. It's almost like makeup. It's quite a nice effect, and you can sort of make it more metallic as well. I like that. Almost like a mannequin doll, but you can make the skin very oily. Uh, so I'm going to change this one so that it's not as strong up there. Um, I guess I could tone these down. They're just too too vibrant. Uh, that's quite nice. Um, Blondie here has got really golden hair. I'm really happy with the way these uh, shaders have turned out. I was surprised when I first started working on them. Uh, it was a blind alley and I was trying a lot of things that I'd read up on, not really understanding it. Uh, Anisotropy, yeah. <laughs> I end up just, I found ways to make convincing hair just by, you know, Doing things to the normal map, like taking the green channel and adding and subtracting from it helps so that pushes things around, but then to make it more realistic you have to get the light direction and the normal direction of the the, the mesh and then do a lot of mixing in, internally. Uh, here's the issue. You can see when using the, the post-process AO you can see it completely ignores the that's why I think that's why I use cutout as a method, but then cutout's not getting the lighting right. So some of these shaders is is fine if they work together, but there's just a lot of things getting in the way. Like post process stack is good, but it's using Unity's rendering engine, and then the rendering saying, okay, I know the depth, I know the alpha of this, and I've got screen space to help do the AO, right? So you've got screen space depth, 
and it's kind of like what do I do first? Do I do the the alpha of this, then the screen space depth, depth, then do I do the, the cutout, and then merge it back in again? So it's like you have to sort of double render things, and that's one of the things I've been looking in for the hair is to do like a couple of passes on the hair so that it can eventually include the AO, but then you're rendering things kind of twice internally. And at the end of the day, you just all you want to do is just go to your AO map, uh, your AO post process, and you can either bring it right down where you can barely see this, or you know, just try some different settings. Like, does this one work? High precision for so you get high precision, does kind of like <clears throat> it gets rid of it in some areas but brings it back in others. Uh, sample can low, low, go for low, uh, down sample, turn that one off. Yeah, you can see it's like it's completely ignoring the the fact that that's there. Now with this one, it seems fine. It seems fine with this one. So I'm gonna have a look. Let's see what one that is. That's using here shader two. VRTC cut out and this one's using okay so it's the cut out one's actually better so that's kind of weird because I'm getting the same effect from these hairs so I can basically just change this one see if you guys tripping up on these shaders and stuff you can just copy and paste and throw in your own stuff um, so that would be your shader 2 VRTC cut out that again is that that one or is it yeah cut out excuse me oh no that one's come back it's confusing did that change I uh, know it was only looking that way I was looking at this here they're both doing the same thing Ah well, right, so ambient occlusion is a little bit susceptible because the order it passes everything that's having to do a depth sort for the hairs and work out what it needs to get rid of pixel wise. The screen space, it's looking at the depth and going, okay, I know what the depth is based on the actual meshes, but I don't care about the actual uh, alpha values here. So that's the drawback when you're using post-process screen stuff. Uh, is it's, it's limited to what it can do. So you will get these little defects now and again. I'm going to try one thing. Uh, I'm going to play with the alpha power. See if I can get rid of it. Yep, see, it, So it doesn't matter the alpha power. It's looking at the actual mesh. If I was to choose like uh, selection wire right you can see it's it's this line here of the mesh i could actually it being a single strand like that i could reduce this mesh right down you see i've not done very much optimization on this this mesh because it's my first one and i'm learning from that but that would obviously help reduce this you're still going to see it but if i could get it like almost perfect to the strand then that would help because um, you don't really see it so much anywhere else but yeah that's one of the, the little nuances with, with using this I'm just going to choose all these and choose your shader I'm going to use VRTC to see what I get and then I'll use your shaders should I do if you see cut out right because I want to just go into that cut out and return it back to the way it was with um, transparent cut out and I know I'm going to lose that light see I lost the blue light there uh, and if I change this to turn off the after coverage uh, where's my where's my cut outs Capacity mask is disconnected, so I need this back in there. Okay, 
that's what I want. And now it's just a case of changing the alpha value or the mask clip value. So something like this, where it's not got so much transparency calculation in between, works fine. It's a little bit um, harsher pixel-wise, but um, let's see, let me just check these. I'm just going to change their alpha power to be the same. So it's a little bit harsher pixel wise, but when you when you play the game with the post process uh, anti lacing, it's not as bad. In some cases it is, some cases it isn't. But we'll go for that, and you can see it's it's not too bad, right? Uh, it can be noisy depending on some of the other factors you've got going on in, in the hair, but otherwise. Point light won't work with that mode. I'm not too keen on it. I prefer the other one. I'll sacrifice AO to be a little bit defective now and again until you know Unity or someone comes up with a solution. I'm going to change these back to the non cutout version. So human shaders here to VRTC, right? I just like that softer look. That's all, and I can bring this right down, right? I got yeah, I've got the little alpha thing happening in there. The, so you can see it like clearly there. The ambient occlusion sort of fine with it. But end of the day, everything's going to be in motion. So you know. As this is moving around, yeah, you've got the the ambient occlusion kind of moving, but you see, it's like it almost goes away there, certain angles because it's got nothing behind it anymore. So you're only really seeing it in certain cases, like you see it a little bit there against the skin. I'm just going to check this skin actually, see if I can do something with this skin. So there's things you can do, like you can change the from shader geometry. Uh, alpha test and transparent. See that's that's now fixed that issue, but now the face itself doesn't receive any shadows. So <laughs> there's loads of like drawbacks, and I'm constantly going around in circles with them. And if anybody has these issues, uh, don't say I've not told you because all these things are subjective to the engine, and I've seen. I've seen things like this crop up in other engines. Don't get me wrong, it's no engine's perfect, but there's there's been a lot of workarounds that make things better. And I'm hoping that when maybe I decide to switch to like Unity uh, 2018 HDRP and you know, I remake all these shaders, then it's going to be you know a little bit easier to get the the, the look that I want. Uh, I'll be switching to Shader Graph as well. Just going to change this micro detail, it's a bit over the top. Um, the skin's really red. Okay. So there you have it. I'm just trying to think if there's any other things I've not covered. we got Makeup for the face added. We got VRTC for the hairs. I uh, also have a program that I've made to help generate hairs. If anyone wants that, just get in touch by email. Because um, if you bought this, then I should be able to give you it for free. So just prove your purchase by invoice. And then I'll give you the little hair plane, uh, hair strand maker. You'll see a link to that. In my YouTube channel, if you go to my YouTube channel, you'll see VRTC hair designer, hair strand designer, it's called, and you'll see that little tool. I've just fixed a few things with it, um, but yeah, that's all good. So thanks for watching this very long video. Sorry it went on and on and on, but 
I just I know that I have to explain things until I'm literally blue in the face or white in the face. Um, thanks for watching. Cheers, guys. Bye.